Welcome to the Shakedown Sound Series. In this series, we're going to share with you envelope filters by some of our favorite manufacturers. Join us on this long, strange trip. Today we're looking at the Superfunk by Solid Gold FX. It is an envelope by filter. And it is groovalicious. <laughs> Funkerific. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. All those things. I feel like we should have Don Cornelius here with us to talk about this pedal. Right. And this is the second yeah. envelope filter in this series from Solid Gold FX. And they, uh, the other one was the Funk the Light. The Funk Light, yeah. Right. So we're going heavy on this one. <laughs> yeah. We went from the Funk Light to the Super Funk. They've done other stuff with envelope fillers before. They they know what they're doing. So we're really happy to have this one in. Um, big thank you to them for helping us out and getting it into. So I don't know. I, I guess the, the question, I guess the place we've started in every one of these Shakedown Sound Series episodes is Sounds from the Doodah Man. You're going to have to hit the Morley when you do that. Oh, yes. Because that was the last one. Getting funky. It was, it was a great idea to put the selector switch yeah. all the way at the back <coughs> corner of the board. Mm -hmm. Like, we could have put that. I have to talk to the design team. <laughs> right. Um, sounds from the Doodah Man. <laughs> I wanted a bigger trip on that last one. Right. Not last one. Which is the biggest trip you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think so. Yeah, and I mean, you could... We've said it, and it probably most of these... Everybody's ideal of what the sound from the dude on man, I think, is a little bit different. But I, I definitely think, like... I've never gone for specific, like, I'm going to capture the true right. essence, essence of the Jerry. Jerry. Right. But, and that would change so often throughout the years, I think. But um, for what I have in my head and what I would go for, I think I can get it in there. So really cool from that perspective. So features really quick. We have five knobs and a switch. Um, the switch is your up-down feature. And real quick, I'm just going to run through the knobs real quick, what they do. Uh, and, you know, I'm sorry. We're getting old. Um, and I can read this easier than I can read that from It's later. all the way down there. Yeah, so we have a depth, upper left-hand corner. And so that's just adjust, adjusting your width and your peak of the envelope filter. So you jump to the frequency knob. And in the center, they say it's a central... It's a... Is... Um, at noon, I guess I should say. It's like a neutral... Right, set neutral. When you go counterclockwise, 
it's kind of your lower dub blast. And if you turn it clockwise, you get the higher frequency stabs. And we'll show that here in a little bit. Um, the attack knob, you know, depending on how you hard you, hard you hit. Mm-hmm. Words, are hard. Trips. Words are hard. <laughs> um, we'll make it trip. So if you pull the attack knob down, you're not going to have to hit as hard. If you push it up, you have to hit harder. Um, so turning ca- clockwise triggers the fil- I, I might have said that wrong. Turning the attack clockwise triggers the filter more easily and keeps it open longer. Turning counterclockwise makes it more responsive by requiring more signal to trigger the filter. You know, got to hit it a little bit harder. Interesting, if you turn it all the way counterclockwise, turn it to zero, mm. it becomes like a cocked wah. And then using the frequency knob, I think you can dial that. And we'll, we'll, sweep sh- mm-hmm. we'll show that. Uh, a really interesting feature on this that I'm not sure any of the other envelope filters that we looked at had a knob for this is the color knob. And just to read it, this control blends the secondary filter. Turn it counterclockwise for brighter, snappier filter tones and clockwise for added grit and growl. It's actually kicking in a second filter, and it's really unique and interesting. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that. Of course, the direction changes the direction um, between hitting it and starting kind of low and going high, or hitting it and starting low, or high and going low. And then the level knob, which, you know, the level knob is, it makes it louder. Do you want me to do the obligatory, uh, this is my clean tone? Sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, the Tyler. Supro Tyler, my gosh, the Supro Hampton into the Tyler JT22, uh, something like this, and it's on. Middle pickup. So one thing we've mentioned, and the reason I've had the manual in my hand mostly, is any time that a manufacturer gives us like a try our settings thing, we're like, well, if you're gonna take the time to write them down. We'll take the time to do it. Um, The first setting is the starting point with all the knobs straight up. Let's save that one for last, and then that will be our jumping. We'll use that as the starting point. (laughs) As the sorbet to cleanse the palate. So their first one, they've taken their depth up a little bit, frequency up a little bit, attack down a little bit. They got the color knob all the way off that over there. This would be the classic funk setting. All right. Let's switch that over to the thick dub. I don't know if they'll be able to hear that in the mics, but you can hear I heard it. it. <laughs> Thick dub. Because this, ladies and gentlemen, is low and slow. <laughs> I should have probably played less than first. <laughs> get a little talk boxy do you feel (laughs) 
I was looking to see if you were doing it. <laughs> I was trying not to. It got it gets a little clicky like an organ. It's pretty cool. Um Reverse quack. Hmm. <laughs> yeah that's really cool all right so we're gonna go back to what they call the starting place which is basically everything at noon uh the only thing i'm not going to take to noon is the color because we're going to come back to that knob separately uh we're going to start with the um depth knob so remember this is, is adjusting the width of the peak of the envelope filter so um maybe some of those big like sustained cords so we can kind of see what that does we'll, we'll start in the middle go all the way off go all the way to the top just to see how that affects it <laughs> There's some spots on this one when you hold it out, it starts doing that crazy thing underneath. <laughs> that's so cool. I don't, I don't know what the deal is, but it's and that's cool. without any drive on it. Imagine that little right. Um, frequency knob. And keep in mind, so at noon we're kind of neutral. When we go counterclockwise, lower frequency dub blast the stabs, the high cut stabs the other way. <laughs> Alright, so the attack knob, we've had that kind of in the middle. Um, if we turn it counterclockwise, triggers, or clockwise, let's do this. If we turn it counterclockwise, we're not going to go the whole way to the bottom. There's a reason for that. This should require more input. So if you play like some single note soft and then really dig in, we shouldn't hear it too much on the soft. When we really dig in, it should pop. How about that? other way and you play soft we should still kind of hear it triggering and that, that knob works really well yeah i like that i like this oh, sorry. And so depending on what kind of pickups you have, you have really hot pickups, if you have a Strat, if you have a Tele, you know, single coil pickups. Like, as you were doing that, I was thinking, why would anybody go counterclockwise where you have to really right. dig into that? Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that's really one of the beautiful things about an envelope filter, too, is the fact that you can play soft to make it not trigger and then play harder. So it becomes very touch sensitive. So right. if you're one of those players that likes to really kind of... If you're a sensitive player. Do that. The other thing, too, like I like to roll my volume knob back for my rhythm guitar. And one of the problems I run into with an envelope filter, roll the volume knob back, 
It just disappears on you. Yeah, it's not triggering right. anymore. So by being able to turn that attack knob up, mm -hmm. you could probably still get the volume knob back a little bit and still have it trigger uh, and work with you know that style of playing. So I think it's really well done. Um, it's really nice. Uh, I think this is the one where they said if we turn it all the way off, we have like a cocked wah then, and then we can move the frequency around. as almost like you would picture toe or heel and toe and then you're moving back and forth so the one thing we haven't done is the color knob. So I think we leave the attack up a little bit. It's, I kind of think that's where we were before. I, I can't remember. Leave that color knob or the attack up a little bit. Let's play with the color knob. So now what we're doing is rolling in a second filter. And what you'll notice the higher we get, the more like almost like vocal growl mm -hmm. kind of talk box mm -hmm. thing starts to happen. That's really unique, I think, to this pedal. Very cool. One feature we haven't talked about too is this little switch, which you saw on the, the presets, but changes the direction of the filter mm -hmm. suite, reverses it um, from what we are in right now. So we'll kind of run that up and down and just flip this over wherever it's at right now. <laughs> And it's been a while since we've done one of these, mm -hmm. but I kind of remember us referring to that as the um, pew pew setting at some point, <laughs> right? Like it gets that laser gun sound. I want to go back to that one riff we did earlier and let you roll the filter or the the color knob yeah. as I play it. The second Cause, filter. Cause I want to see. <laughs> to stop touring with dead and company peter frampton could go and do that <laughs> <laughs> all right um that's the that's the super funk it's super funky it is really sorry cool. <laughs> it's groovalicious groovalicious i was the, the pedal is i'm not so much tonight but um anything yet i like it I, I we've stepped away from them for a while and i forgot how much i like them i i rarely play them in context like you'll have it on your board and you'll play it on some stuff we do and it sounds great. I don't have one on my board, so I'm always wankery to the tenth degree. Um, but I love I love the sound of it. I love some of that, um, like the Edie Raquel song. Oh yeah, that and uh, that that's the sound that I really like. And that's I mean honestly, the first time you hear that, anybody I think any guitar player the first time you hear Edie Raquel's song, they're like, Wait, what is that? Is what that is, a wah wah? What is yeah. that? Uh, it's such a unique sound. Um, and you're right, I love it. I'll slip it in any opportunity. Sometimes too often, probably. But <laughs> um, 
if the opportunity presents itself right. to take whatever song we're playing, slip in an envelope filter, and go down like kind of a reggae <laughs> dead lane, even if it is on a Sunday morning, it, it tends to happen. That's what happens when you Bass take Bass player likes it, that's for sure. <laughs> that's what happens when you take the, you know, take a somebody into that stuff and drop them into a different situation, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So we always take a minute and just say, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for hitting the subscribe button, clicking the notification bell, like button. Uh, really what it comes down to is anytime you interact with the show, it really helps us out, helps us keep you know bringing cool stuff like this in. And we appreciate that to no end um, because we get to play a lot of cool pedals. Yeah. And then also, you know, I love supporting these companies that are making stuff that's just fantastic and allows us to like have some fun and just get lost in playing. Mm -hmm. So with that, a PJ on behalf of the beard reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Groovalicious, funkalicious, stanktastic. Stanktastic. <laughs> We're gonna see if we can make it stanktastic. <laughs>